I fly a lot and I travel a lot by myself because I'm an adult. <laughs> but I've always had this dream that I'd fly one time and sit next to a really beautiful woman and we'd hit it off and I don't know, like get married as the plane lands. <laughs> or at the very least, just play words with friends, make a blanket fort, and then do it. <laughs> but not in the bathroom, in our seats. And the air marshal's cool with it because he realizes what we have is special. <laughs> On this particular flight, the actress Maggie Gyllenhaal boarded and started making her way towards me. And if this was a movie about an interracial couple that falls in love while crossing a continental divide and a cultural divide, <laughs> Maggie Gyllenhaal would star in that movie. Cause let's face it, that's an independent movie. <laughs> yeah. Angelina Jolie is not gonna be in frequent flyer smiles. <laughs> It's not a movie, so Maggie Gyllenhaal doesn't wind up sitting next to me, but instead sits directly in front of me, which I did think about tapping her on the shoulder and being like, hey, Maggie Gyllenhaal, you don't know me, but maybe you'd like to sit next to me. <laughs> we could talk about Batman. <laughs> and what else? Batman. <laughs> Ooh, and that naked secretary movie you did. <laughs> Was that you or was that a body double? <laughs> Question, Maggie Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Do you honor your marriage vows above 20,000 feet or will you be my sky girlfriend? <laughs> she was not my sky girlfriend. Instead, my sky girlfriend was a crusty 50-something year old dude who was reading a Sarah Palin book. <laughs> I don't remember his name, so I'll call him Haas because that's what he kept calling me. He sits down next to me and I had a Rolling Stone magazine and it was in the front seat pocket and he's staring at it, just staring at it really hard. So I offer it to him and he turns me down and he calls it left-wing propaganda. <laughs> Which, no, he's got a point. Some of those album reviews are really in the tank for Obama. <laughs> Four stars for Drake's album? That is straight out of the Saul Alinsky playbook. <laughs> Whatever that is. Now here's the thing, I don't wanna get into a political conversation with this man, cause we have to sit next to each other for the next four and a half to five hours. Which to me, that means we're airplane seat buddies. And that's a partnership. There's trust there. That's about as close to cop partners as I'm ever gonna get. <laughs> Seriously, cause just like cop partners, you have to look out for each other. Like if my airplane seat buddy goes to the bathroom when the flight attendant comes by with pretzels, I'll grab an extra bag of pretzels for my airplane seat buddy. That's what nice people do. Same rules apply. If I'm finishing a text and I know that the turn off all electronics light is on, I expect my airplane seat buddy to be a lookout for me. Like, don't be a snitch, be a lookout. You know, if one of us rips a nasty ass fart, we both blame it on Maggie Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Take that to our graves. So I don't want to get into an, uh, an argument with this guy. I don't want to get into an argument with him. So I feel like, let me change the subject. Let me talk about something else. And it was summertime, and it was right around the time of the baseball all-star game. So I was like, hey, Haas, you watching the baseball all-star game? No, the all-star game's garbage. <laughs> wow, Haas, you hate everything. <laughs> Dude goes off and he's like, can you believe they're letting Derek Jeter play at the all-star game? Sure, he's a baseball player, so <laughs> baseball game. <laughs> Seems pretty logical to me. <laughs> Now, if you told me that Derek Jeter was gonna be in a junior high spelling bee, I might be perturbed. Perturbed. P-E-R-T-U-R-B-E-D. Perturbed. This dude goes off and he's like, Derek Jeter doesn't belong in the All-Star game. He's old and he's washed up and he's out of shape. He's playing like garbage. He's injured all the time. The only reason he's in the All-Star game is because the fans voted him in because he's popular. And that's the problem with the All-Star game is they let the fans decide. <laughs> and in that moment, without realizing it, he basically summed up the main complaint of democracy. <laughs> Like, yeah, Haas, that's what happens when you give people a voice. 
Like sometimes when you let the fans decide, they decide they want to vote for the charismatic biracial guy. <laughs> I looked it up, Derek Jeter, to play in the All-Star game, he got a million votes, which that's a lot of votes. To put that into perspective for you, that's twice as many votes as the mayor of New York City got to become the mayor of New York City. <laughs> like, to become mayor for an unprecedented third term, Michael Bloomberg got half a million votes. There are over eight million people in this city. <laughs> Like, there's a saying that there are eight million stories in this city. Seven and a half million of those stories are just excuses why people didn't vote for mayor. <laughs> they all go like this. Once upon a time, I forgot the end. <laughs> And it wasn't just Jeter, all the baseball players who played in the All-Star game, they all got more votes than the mayors and the Congress people and the senators from their states. Which to me begs the question, is it weird that the best example of democracy at work in this country is filled with Cubans? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But I do know that when people say baseball is as American as apple pie, I say no, it's more American. Cause apple pie, you bake one, you gotta cut slices for everybody. That's socialism. 